Welcome to News Now from the Belmont Journal. I'm joined today by Lisa Gibellario of the Wayside Youth and Family Support Network. And she's also coordinator of the Belmont Wellness Coalition. And I'm your host, Mike Crowley. Today we're talking about vaping. So Lisa, vaping seemed to come, come on the scene you know, fairly rapidly a few years ago. Uh, what's, what's the appeal to young people? Yes, Mike, it really did explode um, pre-pandemic. And I think part of the appeal is that these devices are very small. They're easy to hide. They look like common household items, uh, USB charges or, or pens. Um, they're smokeless for the most part, odorless. Um, the flavors have been created to be really appealing to young people. There's bubble gum and mint and fruit. Um, so the tobacco industry did a really good job of targeting uh, advertising to youth to make it look um, alluring. And they realized how much money could be made from youth. But I will say that initially, vaping had been targeted to adults to try to get them to ease off standard cigarette smoking. So Lisa, you talk to young people and feelings are kind of mixed, but I want to ask you, how harmful is vaping? So, Mike, the, the studies that have come out basically indicate that it is harmful to not only their lungs, um, but their developing brains. Uh, so what happens with vaping is that the um, there's a little battery powered heating device that basically vaporizes the liquid that's in these cartridges. Um, so you're so you these kids are basically taking in vaporized chemicals that are going straight into the lungs. And then, of course, through the bloodstream to the brain. We know that there were reports um, pre-pandemic about popcorn lungs, which was which was a really um, concerning impact to the lungs. Um, there were holes in the lungs, basically um, spread throughout, which is where the word popcorn comes from. So, and, and we just know that anything that hits the the developing young brain, um, any chemical, can be harmful. Uh, we also know that THC, the substance that is found in marijuana, is far stronger today than it was 10, 20, 30 years ago. So for all of these reasons, there are concerning health impacts, not least of which is just that it's high, nicotine in this vaporized form is highly addictive. Um, Lisa, how much vaping do we have in Belmont? Do we, do we have any numbers or a sense of the magnitude? So we don't have um, recent numbers, Mike, but we have the YRBS, which was last issued in 2021. Okay. And we know that there are um, um, up to about 10% of kids at the Chenery, which is you know over 100 kids. And there have been reports this year of finding kids who are vaping and um, understanding that kids are selling vape devices. And this is again, at the middle school. The high school, it's been pretty consistent, upwards of 30% of kids report vaping, which if you take the total number of close to 1400 kids over at the high school, we know that's, you know, several hundred kids. So those are the basic numbers in Belmont. Um, did the survey tell us anything else? Um, for example, you know, whether teens are predominantly vaping marijuana or nicotine? So the short answer is no, the okay. YRBS does not distinguish substances. We wish that they would. Um, and we assume in many cases, both substances. So what are some, some of the underlying reasons for vaping? So why is this so popular? Well, first of all, youth do not see that it is harmful. So there's what's called a low perception of harm in general. We know that that has been exacerbated by the legalization of marijuana. So they're thinking if marijuana has been legalized, it can't be that bad for us. So low perception of harm is one reason. Second reason, Mike, is if they start vaping nicotine, they're probably still vaping because of an addiction. Um, it, it, the chemicals are so potent that addictions can happen fairly rapidly. rapidly. Um, and we also know that the tobacco industry went out of their way um, to make this very alluring, very cool, um, they put you know millions and millions of dollars behind their advertising campaign, and kids are susceptible to these messages. They were successful in getting kids addicted, um, and therefore, you know, increasing their bottom line. So let me ask you this, Lisa: um, What advice do you have for parents who are concerned about the the 
about their kids and, and vaping, whether those kids will uh, uh, be vaping? So I guess two responses, Mike. If they're, if, you know, if your kids are young and probably haven't been exposed to so late elementary, early middle school, open up a dialogue. Um, open up dialogue with all of your kids, but certainly the younger, the better. Share your concerns with them. Let them know about popcorn lungs and some of these impacts to developing brains, just, just overall. Share with them refusal skills. You know, we talk to parents all the time because kids sometimes don't know how to say no. So, you know, a simple no thanks, um, I'm off substances right now. No thanks, I'm the one driving tonight. No thanks, I actually can't afford it. No thanks, I have asthma. You know, any excuse, um, you know, is, is a helpful thing to teach your kids to say. And if they're doing this to perhaps cope with stress, identify other coping mechanisms. Talk about the benefits of going on a walk, listening to music, um, so, you know, getting eight hours of sleep is a good coping mechanism. And ask them, you know, I encourage parents to ask their kids forthrightly, do you really want to develop a habit that pads the pockets of big tobacco? You know, basically that's what they're doing. They're, they're creating um, a huge profit, profit margin for the tobacco industry. So that's for prevention. Let's talk about kids who might be addicted. What okay. parents need to do for those kids is say, you know, we need to get you some help. And how can I help you? I wouldn't be punitive at this point. This is now a health concern. Um, so talk to your kid about what they might think is, would be the most beneficial form of resources. Do you want to talk to the pediatrician? Do you want to get, you know, to go to one of the clinics in Boston that treat addictions? Um, and I would, I would keep it really, not, again, non-punitive and just how can I help you through this? How can I help you put this behind you? All right, Lisa, thank you so much for this update on vaping. Parents and teens need to understand the risks. That's all for now, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.